Today, we have a commander that's a true hanger queen, devouring parts and spitting them out, costing us a small fortune to keep it fed. We're playing Flame War, Brash Veteran, coming up. Hello, and welcome back to the Signature Spellbomb YouTube channel. You did not hear wrong. Today, I am doing a commander deck, one of my personal favorites that I've just started to play. I can't wait to show it to you guys. It is a deck that is currently under $100. But first, I want to talk about the sponsor for our video. HelloFresh is a meal delivery service that fits many needs and allows you to choose based on your dietary restrictions, whether it be vegetarian, keto, or like me, anything that hits my plate. You put in what you want and how you can eat, and they will deliver to your door the freshest ingredients and recipes. So you can make things like this beautiful steak on a bed of rice with fried peppers and a pineapple chutney. So delicious. If you're interested, check out the link in my video description below, and you can enjoy meals just like this one, and you'll get 68% off your first box. Now let's get into that deck tech. Flame War, Brash Veteran, costs one, a black, and a red mana to cast. She has more than meets the eye for red and a black that will allow us to play the backside of the card to the battlefield. She has sacrifice another artifact, put a 1-1 counter on her, and pay one mana, discard your hand, put all exiled cards you own with intel counters on them into your hand. Let's go ahead and look at the back of that card just to inform ourselves of everything we're working with with Flame War. The back side is Flame War Streetwise Operative. It has living metal, which means on our turn it's also a creature, otherwise it's a vehicle. Has Menace and Death Touch is a 2-1, and when it deals combat damage to a player, we exile that many cards from the top of our library face down and put intel counters on each of them and then convert Flame War back. By using pump spells and cards that increase Flame War's power and toughness on the back, it allows us to get excessive card draw on the front. There's a couple different ways you can take this commander. I opted for a classic strategy of artifact burn let's go ahead and go through some of the cards and i think you'll see what i mean pretty quickly but some other strategies to keep in mind is there's some fun stuff you can do with mill or if you want you can go super basic and just use pump spells that will give her plus three plus three turning a one mana pump spell into a draw three spell is pretty amazing we are running one Planeswalker, Dreddy, Scrap, Servant, for three and a red. If we plus two him, we can discard two cards and then draw that many cards. That's just a way to sculpt our hand. If we minus two him, we can sacrifice an artifact. If we do, return to our artifact from our graveyard to the battlefield. That's a fun and simple way not just to uh, get our commander back into play from the graveyard, but also to trick high-cost artifacts from the graveyard directly into play. If we minus 10 him, we get an emblem that says whenever an artifact is put into our graveyard from the battlefield, we return that card to the battlefield at the beginning of the next end step. I'm not saying we're ever going to be able to minus 10 Dreddy because that is a pseudo pipe dream and Planeswalkers tend to have big targets on their chests. But if we can, that is amazing and will allow us to do some nutty things. Imagine we have a mere Battlesphere on the battlefield. We uh, sack it for some reason, maybe to put a 1-1 counter on Flame War, or maybe it just gets destroyed by an opponent. Then at the beginning of the next instep, it enters play and gives us four new Mirror Tokens. So we can actually grow our army in creative ways if we ever get to that plus 10. Next up on the chopping block, or I should say next up in the deck, we have Agitator Ants. This card does a couple things for us at the beginning of each of our insteps. Uh, each player may put two 1-1 one -one counters on a creature they control, and then we go to each creature that had counters put on it this way. The general hope is this is going to allow us to keep powering up our commander or whatever our most uh, important attacking piece is at the time. We've got different ways to make our creatures unblockable, so this is never really going to be as bad for us as our opponents. 
and increasing our commander by two power also increases her by two card draw. So think of it that way. Meanwhile, it's also going to make our opponent's creatures bigger at the cost of them having to attack one another, which we are completely down for. Brea's Apprentice costs two in red and is a 2 3. When it enters the battlefield, we create a Thropter token. We can tap Brea's Apprentice to sacrifice an artifact. We can exile the top card of our library until our next turn we can play that card. So it's really fast card draw. And target creature gets minus two, or sorry, gets plus two, plus zero until end of turn is our other option. You're going to notice as I go through this deck tech that a lot of the cards are going to create tokens for us. That's mostly so we can always transform Flame War to that backside so we can get more cards into exile, get to the end of combat, put a bunch of cards in our hand, and continue to play on. So we kind of need effects like this. Also, we just have some sacrifice outlets in here that will work very well with some other cards later on in the deck tech. This is going to be the first of one of our burn spells. I call this artifact burn because what we're doing is anytime an artifact is put into a graveyard from the battlefield, we're going to have to our opponent lose one life. You can also think of it as a pseudo aristocrat strategy, but we'll also have some spells that burn other players when, when artifacts or non-creature spells enter the battlefield under our control. Draw Scorpion is a super special boy. He's a 3-1 Scorpion artifact creature that says whenever it or another artifact dies, artifact creature specifically, sorry, dies, we may untap target artifact. We can use this for some pseudo ramp in a tight spot. This plays um, an okay unwinding clock variant. It'd be nice to afford an unwinding clock, but like I said, this is a $100 deck tech, so I was little, little tight on the budget there. Next up after that, we have Electrostatic Field. Whenever we cast an instant or sorcery, it'll deal one damage to each opponent. It has Defender, and it's a 0-4 wall. Ferrid Enterprising Salvager says whenever a non-token artifact we control is put into the graveyard from the battlefield, we create a colorless artifact token named Scrap. We can pay one in red and sacrifice an artifact to either put a 1-1 counter on Ferret and give it Menace until end of turn. Go target creature or discard a card and then draw a card. All things our commander, commander wants to do and the deck wants to do. So Ferret has a pretty solid spot in the deck as a 3-3 three, three for 3 mana. Firebraid Archer says whenever we cast a non-creature spell, it'll deal 1 damage to each opponent. Ingenious Artillerist does a similar thing. Whenever one or more artifacts enters the battlefield under our control, it's going to deal that much damage to each opponent. It's a 3-1 for 2 and a red. Junk Diver is a wonderful card, and there'll be a couple other cards that do something similar in the deck tech. For three mana, it's a 1-1 one, one Flying Bird that when it dies, we can return another artifact card from our graveyard to our hand. This is going to allow all sorts of shenanigans if we get the right pieces. There's nothing like being able to sacrifice Junk Diver to go get something back and playing something of high value again later on in the game. Kessick Flame Breather is one in a red for a 1-3. Whenever we cast non-creature spell, it deals one damage to each opponent. Loyal Apprentice has haste. It's a 2-1. It gives all of our tokens haste. And every combat step, it's going to give us a 1-1 Flying Thropter token. Marionette Master for 4 and 2 black is a 1-3 Human Artificer with Fabricator, Fabricate 3. When enters the battlefield, we get the choice of either making 3 servos or putting 3 one, one counters on it. I almost always take the 3 one, one counters, but in a tight spot, blockers are great. Whenever an artifact we control is put into a graveyard from the battlefield, target opponent of our choice is going to lose life equal to its power. When there's three 1-1 one, one counters on this, that's four damage every time we sack an artifact. So that's something to keep in mind. Mayhem Devil says whenever a player sacrifices a permanent, it deals one damage to any target. So this isn't just our permanence. This is our opponent's permanence as well. Mirror Battlesphere costs seven, and it's a 4-7. It's a great target for reanimating back onto the battlefield, and you'll see a couple ways we can do that outside of Doretti. When enters the battlefield, it creates four 1-1 one, one colorless mirror artifact creature tokens. When it attacks, we can tap any number of mirror we control. If we do, it gets plus X plus O and deals X damage to the player or planeswalker it's attacking. So when you think about it, let's say we tap all four. We're going to do four damage 
uh, before combat to whatever we're attacking, and 8 damage after combat if it goes unblocked. So a lot of utility there, a lot of fun. It's also very fun to sacrifice this and play it again to just get more and more mirror onto the field. Next we have Mirror Retriever. When it dies, we return another target artifact from our graveyard to our hand. So very similar to the wording on Junk Diver. Mirror Sire costs 2. It's a 1-1. One, one. And when it dies, we create a 1-1 one, one Phyrexian Mirror Creature token. This is one of those cards in the deck where we get it out. We sacrifice it for value. Then we get a token to sacrifice for value. So it kind of pays for itself. Priest of Yagmoth costs one and a black. We can tap it, sacrifice an artifact, and generate an amount of mana equal to the sacrificed artifact's mana value, and it's a one-two. In a lot of cases, if we sacrifice something that costs two and then have a way to get it back to our hand, we can immediately replay it. It's too bad this isn't an artifact creature, because if it was, Draw Scorpion could then untap it, and we could wash, rinse, repeat. There are ways to make it an artifact creature, but they didn't make my list. Psychomancer is a artifact creature Necron Wizard from the 40k set. It's a 1-1 flyer with Harbringer of Despair. Whenever it or another non-token artifact we control is put into the graveyard from battlefield or is put into exile from battlefield, a target opponent loses one life and we gain one life. That extra life gain is nice but not necessary. We're really all about that burn plan. Reckless Fire Weaver lets us burn each opponent for one damage every time an artifact enters the battlefield under our control. That includes our tokens. Scrap Trawler for three is a 3-2. It's a lot like Junk Diver. It says whenever it or another artifact we control is put into the graveyard from the battlefield, we return to our hand, target artifact card in our graveyard with lesser mana value. So if Junk Diver dies, we not only get any artifact from our graveyard back to our hand, but we would also get an artifact that costs one or less as well. Scrap Welder is wonderful. It allows us to do some funny things later on. If we tap and sack an artifact value with mana value X, we can return target artifact card with mana value X or less from our graveyard to the battlefield and gains haste till end of turn. This works good with Junk Diver to get us extra creatures. It will get our Mirror Retriever back onto the battlefield. It allows us to pull some additional shenanigans and create some loops. Again, if it was an artifact, we could do more with it with Draw Scorpion, but sadly it's not. Slow Bad Goblin Tinkerer is merely in here to help protect our commander in important pieces. We can sacrifice any artifact to it to give target artifact indestructible till end of turn. It also allows us to sacrifice artifacts at instant speed to burn out our opponents when we get close to the end game. Slow Bad Iron Golem can be tapped. We sacrifice an artifact. It's going to add red mana to our mana pool equal to its mana value. We can only spend that mana to activate abilities of artifacts or to cast artifact spells. There is one particular artifact in the deck this works best with. Togo Goblin Weaponsmith has landfall. Whenever land enters the battlefield under our control, we create an equipment named Rock that has equip 1. If you pay 1 and tap, it and sacrifice the rock, it'll deal two damage to any target. Mostly we want to create these rock tokens, not to get the free burn spell off of it, but mostly to actually have fodder to sacrifice to flame war to pump her up. These little tokens are excellent for what we're trying to do value-wise with the deck. Workshop Assistant is just like Junk Diver. When it dies, uh, return another target creature card from your graveyard to your hand. Up, oh, sorry, not creature, artifact card. So it's got even more utility. Feed the Swarm for one in a black. Destroys target creature or enchantment opponent controls. And then we lose life equal to that permanent's mana value. Honestly, we have very little in the deck that will let us deal with enchantments, which is the main reason this card hit this spot for removal. Seize the Spoil will let us discard a card when we cast it for two in a red, and then we get to draw two cards and create a treasure token. The Devil lets us destroy an artifact, creature, or planeswalker for two black and a red at instant speed, so very good card for this slot. Big Score says an additional cost to cast it. We have to discard a card. It costs three in a red. We're going to get to draw two cards and then create two treasure tokens, so this just... Fills a couple needs for us. It's kind of pseudo ramp, kind of draw, you know, does does a bit. Costly plunder, costs one in black. Let's us draw two cards if we sacrifice an artifact or creature to it. 
go for the throat will just destroy target non-artifact creature. Rakdos Charm has three modes, all of them good. The first is Exile Target Player's Graveyard. Really good against Reanimator decks or decks that are using a Graveyard Synergy like we'll be doing. Destroy Target Artifact or each creature deals one damage to its controller. Against a token deck, sometimes that last ability is punishing. Tumor Battle Rage will give a creature double strike till end of turn. If, the creature, if we have a creature that's power 4 or greater, it will also gain Trample. When combined with our Commander, this will essentially double its power and let us draw, du draw double as many cards. One of the only actual straight-up pump spells that made the deck, I went Equipment for most of my draw and pump. Unexpected Windfall for 2 and 2 red. Let's us discard a card to draw two cards and create two treasure tokens. Arcane Signet does what Arcane Signet does. One of a very few number of ramp spells in the deck, since a lot of the cards are low on the casting cost three with, tree, with very few exceptions. Ashnod's Altar lets us sacrifice a creature to add to two colorless mana to our mana pool. This will allow us to create some interesting loops where we can sacrifice, say... Our Mirror Retriever, create two colorless mana, then if we can get it back to our hand, we can immediately cast it again. Blood Forge Battle Axe costs one, equips for two, gives the equipped creature plus two plus O, and then whenever the equipped creature deals combat damage, we create a token copy of the Blood Forge Battle Axe. This is a great way to increase our damage and potential turn after turn, or to just make sure we have a token on the battlefield to sacrifice so we can convert our commander back and forth. Ceremonial Knife does a reasonable version of this. The equipped creature gets plus one, plus one, and has whenever the creature deals combat damage, create a blood token. We're probably not actually going to use those blood tokens for anything but fodder most of the time, but it's not bad to have an option for draw. Glaring Spotlight lets us hit our opponent's hexproof creatures as though they didn't have hexproof, which is wonderful for some of our removal. Also, if we pay three and sacrifice it, creatures we control gain hexproof till the end of turn and are unblockable. So this can be a mass protection spell and also guarantee we can get our commander through on damage. Goldvein Pickaxe costs two, equips for one, gives the creature plus one plus one, and whenever it deals combat damage, we make a treasure. Iker Wellspring, when it enters the battlefield, we draw a card. When it goes to the graveyard, we draw a card. Really good, really simple. Works well with our sack strategy. Key to the city. We can tap, discard a card, and make our commander or another creature unblockable till end of turn. When we untap it, if we want to pay two mana, we can draw a card. So it lets us kind of sculpt our hands, but it's really important that it lets our commander be unblockable. And you always need a key to make your engine rev. Luxodon Warhammer gives the equipped creature plus 3 plus 0 and Trample and Lifelink. That's a lot of ands there, but it is wonderful. Sometimes that Lifelink will help us get just enough damage across the board to stay in the game, and the Trample lets us get our damage through so that we can put those cards into exile that we're going to draw with the front side of our commander. Manifold Key has two modes. We can pay one and tap it to untap another artifact. This can be good to get a blocker up or to set up other combos or strategies, or we can pay three and make target creature unblockable till end of turn. Minosynth Wellspring, whenever it enters the, uh, yeah, whenever it enters play or goes to the graveyard, we can search our library for basic land card and put it into our hand. We are running 10 mountains and 10 swamps, so this might find quite a bit of use over the course of the game. Number White Schematic lets us make a 1-1 colorless construct when it enters play and when it leaves play. So essentially we get to sacrifice this card three times for our needs. So it can be very useful throughout the course of the game. We also don't have to, but it's just nice to think about. It gives you a token, it is a card you can sack, and it gives you another token. Oni Cult Anvil will give you a token if one or more artifacts leave the battlefield during your turn, but you get to create a 1-1 token, but it only triggers once each turn. You can tap it and sacrifice an artifact to deal one damage to each opponent and gain one life. Just another piece of our burn strategy, and it's going to replace a good artifact with a 1-1 token. 
Prize statue gives us a treasure when it enters the battlefield and a treasure when it leaves the battlefield. Prying Blade gives an equipped creature plus 1 plus 0 for 1 mana and 2 to equip. The equipped creature, if it deals combat damage to a player, we create a treasure token. Rakdo Signet costs 2. We can pay 1 and tap it to generate our colors, 1 black and 1 red. This is just one of our ramp pieces. Semi-Balanced Anvil is probably one of the most important ramp pieces in the deck because it actually made the budget. Uh, when it enters the battlefield, we can exile a non-land card from our hand. Hopefully an artifact creature would be the best thing. Spells that we cast that share a card type with the exile card will cost two less to, ta to uh, cast. Sorry. So making our artifacts uh, free in most cases or cheaper is wonderful for what the deck is trying to do. Servo schematic costs two. When it enters play, we create a 1-1 servo. When it leaves play, we create a 1-1 servo. Soul Ring costs 1 and taps for 2. You should know that by now. Spine of Ishtar is probably one of the more important removal spells in the deck. For 7 mana, when it enters the battlefield, we can just destroy any permanent, even lands. When it's put into a graveyard from the battlefield, we can return it to its owner's hands. We have quite a few ways to sacrifice this and return it to our hand, and we have two different creatures we can sacrifice this to to generate 7 mana. So you sack it, generate the 7 mana, and immediately play it again to destroy another permanent. So a lot of value to be had there. Swiftfoot Boots is mostly here to protect either an important creature or a commander. Give them Hexproof and Haste. Sword of the Hours puts a 1-1 counter on the equipped creature every time that creature attacks. And then when the equipped creature deals combat damage, we can roll a d12. The result is greater than the damage dealt, or it's a 12 then we get to double the amount of 1-1 counters that's currently on the creature. This is just really good with a commander that mostly plays around a 1-1 counter strategy. Tempting Contract. At the beginning of our upkeep, each of our opponents can choose to create a treasure token. For each opponent that does, we create a treasure token. So every time our turn comes around, we can get anywhere between 1 and 3 treasures, and our opponents will benefit as well. Whisper Silk Cloak says a quip creature can't be blocked in Hash Shroud. It is a good protection piece. And it fits nicely into our goal of getting our commander through combat. Agent of the Iron Throne costs two and a black. It says commander creatures we own have whenever an artifact we or bleh, whenever an artifact or creature we control is put into the graveyard from battlefield, each opponent loses one life. Again, that's pretty much all we want to do with this whole deck. Agent of Shadow Thieves says commander creatures we control have. Whenever this creature attacks a player, if no opponent has more life than that player, we put a 1-1 counter on this creature. It gains Death Touch and Indestructible till end of turn. Our commander already has Death Touch, but being able to put additional 1-1 counters and Indestructible on it will definitely help us throughout the course of the game. Cultist of the Absolute says commander creatures we own get plus 3, plus 3, and have Flying and Death Touch. So Extra Evasion and Ward pay 3 life. At the beginning of our upkeep, we have to sacrifice a creature. We're pretty much in a mode where we plan on sacrificing creatures anyway, and this provides our commander with additional evasion and additional protection. Guild Artisan says, whenever uh, commander creatures we own have, whenever this creature attacks a player, if no opponent has more life than that player, we create two treasure tokens. Pies Revolution says, whenever a non-token artifact is put into our graveyard from the battlefield, we can return that card to our hand unless an opponent has Pies Revolution deal 3 damage to it. This is going to create a lot of interesting scenarios where our opponents are going to have to choose whether or not they take 3 damage to prevent us from putting a card back into our hand. Now we're into the lands. I am running 10 Swamps and 10 Mountains, but we're also running Blightstep Pathway, Bajuku Bog, Command Tower, Dragon Skull Summit, Dross Force Bridge, Evolving Wilds, Exotic Orchard, Foreboding Ruins, Greater Furnace, Mountain Rakdos Carnarian, Rogue's Passage, mostly for that unblockable piece hidden there, Smoldering Marsh, Spire of Industry, S Swamp I already mentioned, Aeromorphic Expanse, and finally Vault of Whispers to end out the deck. Uh, the total cost of the deck came out to be just about 99 Well, I could double-check real quick. I'm always happy to do that. 
Um, the total cost of this deck came out to uh, 101, oh, I guess it went up in the time since filming, $106.61 in the main deck. Still very affordable. There are some pieces you can probably swap out if you want to try to match that price. Uh, thank you so much uh, for being here and hanging out with me. I do appreciate it. If you look below, you'll see I have some subscribers. Oh, sorry about that. If you look below, you'll see I have some subscribers rolling on by. If you want to be part of this scroll, all you got to do is hit the subscribe button and like the video below. Please share it to help me get more eyes on my YouTube channel. Thank you so much for dropping by, and I hope you guys all have a great rest of your day.